heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Filled my soul. Hello, once again, I'm John Shannon, the evangelist in the Churches of Christ. Thank you for watching this uh, television program, Straight from the Sheet. We have another good lesson for you at this uh, segment of our study. Thanks for GBN. And thanks for you, thanks to you for watching this series of lessons. Uh, if you get your Bible out and settle down and relax and let us have another good lesson, study from God's Word. Our text is John chapter 3, 1 through 13 is our text. And our lesson for today is titled, You Must be born again. You must be born again. There's a lot of controversy, a lot of disputing on this new birth to be born again. And we'll see uh, Pharisee, the name of Nicodemus, came to our Lord by night. Um, I don't know why he necessarily came by night, but he came. Now, if a man is saved, please listen carefully. If a man is saved, he must be born twice. Oh, Born into this world, that's physical. And born into the kingdom of Christ, that's spiritual. Let's do it again. If a man is saved, what do you mean saved? I'm speaking of remission of sin. I'm speaking of being in Christ. First, he's got to be born into the world. When he sins, if he's saved from sin, watch it. He's got to be born twice. Born into the kingdom of God's dear son, which is the church. Now, are you born again? Now, wait a minute. This new birth is not a physical birth. Well, let me slow it down a little bit because I want you to get it. I want to look as pretty as I can. It's going to, I know it's kind of hard to look pretty, but uh, I'm going to try to look pretty and smile. This new birth, this being born again, is not a physical birth. It's a spiritual birth. Listen to me carefully. It has nothing to do with physical, the way you feel. Wait a minute. Get feelings out of your mind. The new birth has nothing to do with having a spell, having a fit, better felt than told. Get all that stuff out of your mind. Because that's, that has nothing to do with this new birth. You got it? This is a spiritual birth, and there's no feelings involved. All right? Now, let's run down our text. Old familiar passage. First point we have, we have the man, which is, Nicodemus, Pharisee. We have the message of the messenger and the message. That's Christ. And then we have the must. First point, verse 1 and 2, the man. Second point, 3 and 4, the Messiah and his message. Third point, 5 through 7, the must. We got it? 
Now let's run down this text here. There was a man of the Pharisee. What in the world is, oh, well, let's look at it. He was in a party. What party? He was the Pharisee, largest part of the Jewish sex. And let me say this. The law of Moses didn't make a Pharisee. They took the law of God, the law of Moses, and mixed it with tradition of men. And that's how they came up with a Pharisee. And the reason the Pharisees didn't care for Jesus is because the Pharisee, Jesus stayed on them because they had deviated from the law of Moses. And the way I, reason I preach like I preach is because many individuals have de deviated from the gospel of Christ. And the gospel of Christ will never make a denomination. Are you listening? The person, his name of Nicodemus, innocent, blood, victor over people, right? Member of the Sanhedrin, Nicodemus. His position, he was a ruler of the Jews. Period. The same came to Jesus by night. I don't know why he came, but he came. Now, what part of life are you in? Are you in a day, noon, or getting ready for the evening? You need to come to Jesus before it's too late. And the way you come by come to Jesus is by hearing his gospel and obeying it. Are you listening? All right. And if you're a member of the Church of Christ and you strayed away and went back out in the world and living like the worldly people, you need to come on back. You need to come on back. Come on back before you turn to the lake. Because if you die in your sins, you'll be eternally lost. Come on back. Repent and pray God. And he'll forgive you. Is that pretty good? All right. Let's go a little further here. The praise. Watch the praise. And said unto him, Jesus, Rabbi. You think Jesus was impressed with that? Jesus wasn't impressed with that. A lot of times individuals, who they don't know any better. They want to call John Shannon. Hey, Reverend Shannon. Hey, Rep, how you doing? And I acknowledge them. They don't know any better. When I hear a man call me Rep, man or woman call me Rep, Reverend, they don't know any better. And it's not my job to condemn them. They haven't been properly taught. They've been taught <clears throat> by denominational preachers. That's what you should call the preacher Rep. Well, I'm not a Reb. I'm John Shannon. And where you learn about Reb? <clears throat> where you learn about it? Where did you learn in the gospel where a man was called Reb? Where? I'm not impressed with that. But I know when you call me Reb, you just don't know the Bible. And uh, I'm not going to down you, but I hope, I, I hope I'll have the opportunity to teach you properly. You got it? All right. Now, and Jesus said, you're all a brethren. Be ye not called rabbi, for you're all a brethren. Matthew 23. Well, perception. Watch this here. Nicodemus said, we know that thou art a teacher from God. Well, how you know that? Well, watch this here. The phenomenon. For no man can do it these miracles that thou doest, except God be with them. Nicodemus, you're doing pretty good there. Now, if you go back to chapter 2 and verse 25 of John, let me show you something. Look at John chapter 2 in the last verse. Look at it. John 2, the last verse, look at it. Look at verse 24 and 25. But Jesus did not uh, commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Look at verse 25. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Do you think one time Jesus 
didn't know why Nicodemus came to him. He knew why he came to him. And he bridged the gap. He knew why he came to him. Now watch this. Let's look at the Messiah and his message. Metaphor of the new birth. Watch Jesus now. Jesus knew what he needed. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, sir, truly, truly, I say unto thee, Nicodemus, watch it, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus is using a metaphor there. It was not time for the new birth to take place. It was a matter, he was using a metaphor. You got it? Now, watch this here. Watch the misconception of the new, first, of the new birth. Jesus used a metaphor. Nicodemus had the misconception about the new birth. Just like most people in religion today, they got the misconception about the new birth. Now watch this. Watch Nicodemus. Watch it. A ruler of the Jew. Watch it. Ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus saith unto him, look, look at this. How can a man be born when he's old? Nicodemus, don't, don't, don't criticize Nicodemus too badly because you're sitting out there in the audience there, and you, you're similar to Nicodemus. How can a man, just as silly as he can be. All right, watch this. Listen to this. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, wait a minute. That's the silly ones today that's been to college and had their brains expanded. He's a reverend, he's a doctor, they got a DD and a double LD. Too much sense for anything. Are you listening? Now that's sin as he can be. Wait, wait a minute. Look, look at this. Wait, I, that question. When did Jesus say anything about his mother? Jesus didn't mention his mother. And I have that problem today. You started preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel to individuals, they bring up their mother. Well, 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 my mother, my mother was a good woman and she didn't die in this church. Uh, wait, wait a minute, we're not discussing your mother. Your mother's not who died for you. Christ died for us. You got it? Some people say, well, I, I want to be in the church that my mama died in. Wait a minute, if the church your mother died in is not in the Bible, you can't be saved in that. Well, my mother uh, uh, went to heaven, and I know she wasn't a member of the Church of Christ, and I know she died and went to heaven. You don't know where your mother is. You don't know where she is. We're not discussing your mother. I remember one time I was preaching like this, and we had a big old tall fella. I guess he was at least that much taller. Looked like he weighed 250, 300 pounds. He said, uh, Preacher, are you saying that my mother went to hell? Well, what are you going to do? Here's a big man that tall there. Well, I had to use my head. I said, you got to think right quick. I said, sir, I'm sorry, but I didn't know your mother. You see that? But I'll tell you, if you don't obey the gospel and come remember the church and live right, you're not going to heaven. There's not but one more place for you can go. There's only two places, heaven or hell. If you're not born again, you can't go to heaven. All right. Well, the must. The instrument of the new birth. Watch it now. Watch Jesus. The must. Jesus Answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee. That's Emmanuel. Except a man be born, watch it, of water and of the spirit. Watch it. 
Watch the impossibility. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, wait a minute. Now, you Jehovah's Witness and you Baptist and anybody else that says that the kingdom is still in the future, I want to know this. Jesus said, if you're born again, you enter the kingdom. Well, how could you enter something? Listen to me. If it doesn't exist, I told you that the kingdom that Jesus Christ came to build, told you in previous lesson, it wasn't a material kingdom. It was a spiritual kingdom. The kingdom of Christ or the church of God is spiritual in character or makeup. It's not a material kingdom. Why? All nations will flow into it. It's just one. Now, if it's physical, it would be impossible for everybody to get in it. On this earth. Hey, listen. But it's spiritual in character and makeup. Please listen. Now, either the kingdom is either here or it's not. If the kingdom is here, a person can be born again. If the kingdom is not here, a person can't be born again. All right. Imperity of the new birth. Look what we have. We're going to talk about, watch it now. We're going to talk about the material and the metaphysical. Now, let me show you something. This is material, physical. Spiritual stuff is metaphysical. You got it? Jesus is not talking about stuff material. Got it? But he's, he's going to explain. Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's physical. Material. Watch it. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now he's watching now. He's talking about two different things now. Physical, metaphysical. All right, watch this. Must, mob or not, that I say unto ye, ye must be born again. Watch this here. Illustration to help understand the new birth. Now I want you to really pay attention to this. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. He's going to use the wind. He said, the wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and where it goeth. Watch it now. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now watch this now. The wind, please listen, the wind is the invisible part of the physical creation. Come on. Listen to me. The wind is the invisible part of the physical creation. You see that? You got it? Now, the spirit of man is the invisible part of the human creation. Wait a minute. You got the physical creation, that's the world. The wind is the invisible part of that. Now you got a human body. The invisible part of the human body is the inner man. Now the inner man is the subject of the new birth and not the outer man. Somebody going to have to tip me for this. You're going to have to tip me for this. I'm helping you out. The person to be born again is not that physical outward man, but it's the inner man. So when Jesus used the wind, he was using it for an illustration to get Nicodemus to understand it's not the fleshly man, but the inner man, which is the spirit of man. You got an inner man and you got an outer man. Now let's lick your fingers now. Go to... Corinthian letter, 2 Corinthians 4, 
Let's look at it. Look at it. Second Corinthians 4, verse number 16. For which cause we faint not, for though the outward man perish. Look at that. That's the outward man. Flesh. You're going to die. Perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Well, what in the world is it in man? That's the spirit inside of you. Got it? Look at it. It said, look at here. For our light affliction, which is for, uh, but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, that's physical, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now get it now. This physical out of a man, you can see it. But the thing on the inside, you can't see it. That's the inner man. So the person to be born again is the inner man. You got it? Now, listen, let's go over it again. The wind is the individual part of the physical creation. We all know that. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can it not tell whence it come or where it goeth? He's not talking about a weather vane. He's just talking about you don't know the source. You don't, the source of the wind. You got it? Now, then he says, listen, it says, watch this here. The, the spirit of man is the invisible part of human creation. Watch what he says. So is everyone. So is he. He's not talking about the conversion here. He didn't say, so is the operation of the Holy Spirit. He didn't say, no. He says, so is the one that's born of the Spirit. Who or what is the subject of the new birth? The inner man is the subject of the new birth. Paul said in Romans 1, 9. You got it? All right, I hope you got that. Now, listen to this. Five steps into the church or the kingdom. The church of Christ is a spiritual house. You got it? And we're talking about something spiritual. We're not talking about some kernel. You got it? I have these graphics up here uh, to kind of show you uh, with some visual aid, what I'm talking about. Now, when you're born again, watch this here. You enter into a spiritual realm. You got it? And that realm is in Christ. Are you listening to me? Now, watch this here. One must hear and believe the gospel. Watch this now. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5, verse number 8 and verse number 12, the, the text says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ under them. What do you mean preach Christ? When you preach Christ, you got to preach about his birth, his business, his death, his burial, his resurrection from the grave, and his ascension to heaven. When Christ died on the cross, he shed his blood, he purchased the kingdom, he purchased the church. Colossians 1, 13 and verse 14. You got it? Acts 20 and verse 28, Ephesians 5, 23 through 27. You see that? Now, you got to hear that and believe it. Do you believe Jesus Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day? Yes. Good. Now, do you believe that he built and bought one church? No. Nope. You can't believe in a church you do. No. Nope. Uh-uh. If the church you're in is not in the gospel of Christ, you're not saved. You're not born again. Because everybody that was born again enter into the kingdom. Or Brother Shannon, the kingdom is not here. Well, Paul apparently didn't know that. Because Paul said to the Colossians, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love and whom we have redemption through his blood to forgive us of sin. And John said in Revelation 1, uh, 9 and 10, I, John, who are also in your brother in tribulation and in the kingdom. So the kingdom is here 
and I'm a member of the kingdom. And if you're born again, you're a member of the kingdom of Christ. And if you say that you're not a member of the kingdom of Christ or the church of Christ, you're not born again and you're yet in your sins. So you got to hear the gospel and believe it. Then verse 12, verse 5, Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Acts 8 and verse 12, watch it. When they believed Philip preaching the thing concerning the kingdom and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. And watch this. One must hear and believe the gospel. They must repent of their sins, confess Christ, then they're baptized in the Christ, they remember the kingdom. That's how a person is born again. Now Nicodemus thought that maybe he could get into this new kingdom on his Jewish background. You know, he was Abraham's seed. You see, he was a Jew in the old kingdom. But Jesus said to be a part of this new kingdom, which is not physical, you got to be born again. You got it? And I believe you, uh, uh, Nicodemus, watch it, and Joseph of Arimathea, the Bible says in John, I believe it was, that they were waiting for the kingdom. They were waiting for the kingdom. Apparently they understood the teaching of Jesus. Are you listening? Now, if you want to be saved, you got to be born again. What in the world is born again? Well, Jesus used a metaphor to Nicodemus. It wasn't time for it to happen then. But in Mark's record, Jesus dropped the figure speech and used plain English that nobody could miss. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Watch it. He that believeth and he is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. Can I tell you something, good people? There is an inner difference between he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And Jesus saying, except you be born of water and of the spirit, you can't be saved. That's what you call, watch it, an equation. Same thing. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes and not shall be damned. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. Now, Peter said, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit of the unfeigned love of the brothers. See that you love one another with a pure heart verbally, being born again, not a corruptible seed, flesh, but incorruptible by the word of God. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. You must be born again. I hope you obey the gospel before it's eternal too late. May God bless and keep you to the next time. Thank you so very much. Hey, heaven came down and glory filled my soul.